Hello folks, welcome to The Knocking Point. Today we're messing around with string silencers. Hello folks, today I'm going to try to quiet this bow down a little. You can hear uh, that this Viper has some carbon limbs and it, it makes a pretty good twang. Uh, this is the natural resonance of the bow and you can hear it. Uh, I'm going to set up the camera here, do a couple shots, go in, put a couple string silencers on it, or maybe four, and see what it sounds like. And we'll put, I'll have everything in the same exact spot so that the microphone behaves the same. You can hear this kind of a twang to this bow. Uh, actually, it's hard to tell if uh, you hear it on the microphone as much as I hear it in my ears because I'm holding on to it and it's right between my ears when I shoot. Okay, let's go put some silencers on. Here's an example of the type of silencers we're going to put on today. These are the cat whiskers and these are just balls of yarn. Okay, folks, now I'm going to go out and shoot this uh, Martin Viper that already has, that I'm installing this on in the video that you're watching. And uh, if you want to watch all of the little bits of tying on, how I tie this all on, you can go and watch it after the bow comparison. Uh, maybe I'll put some music with it or something to make it a little more interesting. Okay, I've put the silencers on. It was a little bit tricky trying to split the string and put the ball through the string and then lash it. Uh, I could use a little work on that. That one's a hair smaller up on the top side. Little asymmetrical. Uh, that is to knock down the different modes, frequency modes in the string. And uh, see what it sounds like. I think that's a lot quieter. You can hear this kind of a twang to this. Wow, that's impressive, isn't it? Let me move over so I... Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a lot quieter. Wow. There you go, folks. That'll really quiet a string down. Just as a comparison, here's a different longbow. This is my Dwyer Dauntless. And you can hear it makes kind of a twangy. You can hear the. I can hear the little silencers. I don't know if you can hear it when you shoot. Let's see what this sounds like. Uh, it's pretty quiet. It's one of my quietest longbows. Let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> yeah, you can hear the, the difference. You can hear the fletching rip through the air. Okay, that's pretty quiet. Now, for the quietest... Now, for my quietest bow, I don't know if it's the bow, the string, or the Navajo wool silencers um, that, that causes this, but you can hear this is... So I bought this bow with this string on. I've always wanted to try this. Um, that's an interesting thing about buying bows, uh, used bows. You can see how other people set them up and, and learn things. So listen to this one. This one is very quiet. So all I hear is just a little difference.
Some of the things you're going to need for this task are, uh, these are extra, I like having carabiners to pull on the string with the bow string. You can see I have a little paper, uh, hanger and I've wrapped some wool yarn around it and tied a clove hitch or a cinch knot or clinch knot around this portion with some bow string that I'm going to use to lash it onto the bow, into my bow string. The other thing we're using, it, oh well, here's the cat whiskers. The ones I'm putting on today are about an inch and a half, and here's a little bit of bowstring with it. Typically, I go with a little bit smaller, about an inch. I like a little inch ball, a little smaller ball on there. The other thing you're going to need is your knife or some cutting device and a burning device to sear the ends. And this is an example of what we're putting on. Here's the larger ball, and here's the puff we've put on. You can see that this weighs about 25, 22-ish, uh, we get it in the center. No, 25 with the string. And these weigh about 30 grams with the string. Most of that string will be cut off. It's probably just one gram worth of string. Now I'm using a series of half hitches, which end up creating a, a clove hitch and a half. You can see that I do about three on each side. This helps to pull the strands back together again. The string kind of splits apart from this big ball. A few more half hitches, pulling it tight up against the ball.
Uh, a couple more on the other side. For a total of at least three. Now I've separated the bundle so that I can see the portion that held it together originally and I'm creating some square knots across that. Another option is to create a clove hitch completely around the ball. Once the square knots are all tied tight, I will repeat on the other side and then melt Oh, look, so I'm throwing in a couple extra half inches to get me to the other side. This is one method. The other method is to create a clove hitch kitty corner around the ball. That's pretty confusing. But uh, try different things. I don't have this quite worked out. If you have a better up idea, Please let me know. Okay, now that I've created a square knot plus, I'm cutting it, leaving a good tag end, pretty long tag end, folding over the bundle to expose just the portion that I want to melt. Mm. Melting these with a lighter creates a, a ball of molten string that makes it hard for the square knot to pull out. Obviously, I don't need to tell you that I'm cutting these with scissors, but I guess I am. <laughs> 